Good morning, everyone. Welcome back, week four, day two. Today, we're going to start a new topic. It's a topic that we saw already in seventh grade, which I hope that you remember. And it has some new definitions. Today, I decided to have all the definitions already on screen. Remember to leave an empty space at the very top of your notebook for today's date, uh, for today's topic, and then the date at the very right corner. So the first definition is, what is a relation? Well, a relation is a set of order pairs. Any group of order pairs is a relation. I gave you over here an example of six order pairs, zero comma zero, negative one comma five, eight comma five, three comma negative two, zero comma nine and nine comma zero. That is a relation. How do we know? Because it's a group of points, okay? Remember an order pair gives you the location of a point in the coordinate plane. Now, from this point, from this relation, we can also find the domain and the range. What is the domain? Well, the domain is the first coordinate of the order pairs. In other words, the values of X. The range, in the other hand, is the second coordinate of the ordered pair. In other words, all of the values of Y. Now remember, we are going to copy them only one time, okay? And one time only. So we are also going to place it in order from the least number to the greatest one. So if you see, I have negative one, which is this negative one, zero, this one, because remember it is X comma Y, order pairs are X comma Y. So the X is zero, three, eight, and nine. Me is you're missing a zero. Yeah, I know this zero, we write it only one time and one time only. You are going to represent right now the domain as DOM, not just the D, DOM, open this braces, and you write the numbers and you close the races. Then the range, you're going to say range, the whole word. Now the range, as I said, are the values on the Y. So in this case, the smallest one, negative two, which is this one, zero. Again, we have it twice, so we're only going to copy it once. Then five, and then at the end, nine. Okay, so again, the zero over here is also written only one time. No questions so far? So far so good? Okay then. Now, a function. What is a function? Well, a function is a relation to begin with, okay? It is a relation, but it is a relation that has exactly one member or one value of the domain for every value on the range. In other words, or in simpler words, it is a relation that has no values of X repeated. You do not care, or I don't care, or we don't care if the values of Y are repeated, but the values of X cannot be repeated in order for it to be considered a function. So in this case, we have the zeros on the X repeated. So just because of that, this is a relation. It's going to call it route. This is a relation, but it is not a function because we have repeated the number zero on the X. So that's why it is not a function, okay? Because you cannot have the value X repeated, okay? Value X cannot be repeated. So in pink, I have a phrase which says, every function will be a relation, always, because a function is a relation. But not every relation is gonna be a function, just like the example that we have at the beginning, because a value of X was repeated. So there are different ways of determining if a function is a relation or not. One of them is with pure observation, just like we did here. We observe, 
Okay. The second method is with the two columns, the column of the domain and the column of the range. In this case, I place all of the domains of these four order pairs. It is a relation. Okay. Remember, this is a relation because it is a group of order pairs. Now we're going to see if it is a function. Okay. So how do we see it? So I wrote over here the domain zero, one, two, and three, and I wrote the range zero, two, three, and four. And what are we going to do now? We're just going to connect or match the column of the domain with the column of the range according to the points that we have. So we have zero, zero, one, three, two, two, and three, four. And we're going to observe if no more than one line comes out from the domain towards the range, then this is a function. Now, what if with another color, I had, for example, three comma zero. We'll, uh, but I don't have this one, I don't have that one. I have three comma zero. Well, still, there's only one line coming out from each domain. So it will still be a function, okay? This one will still be a function. But what if I have it like that? Three comma zero and three comma four. Like if I had over here three comma zero, will now that be a function still or just a relation? Well, I have two numbers going out, two lines going out of the number three. Therefore, in this case, it is not a function. If we add the three comma zero, it is not a function because I have two lines going out of the domain three. So it is not a function. It will still be a relation though, because it is a group of numbers of order pairs, but it will not be a function, okay? Josephine, your camera. Now, next definition or the next form of finding if a relation is a function or not. It is with the graph. It is graph and the point. And then using the vertical line test to prove if it is a function or not. But what is the vertical line test? Well, the vertical line tests are also called the pencil test. It is a test that where in which you pass a pencil or a ruler or any vertical line, it could also be your finger, throughout the graphed coordinate plane, it has to be through a, coordinate, a graphed coordinate plane in order to determine if the relation is a function. And how do we determine it? If that vertical line that you're passing through the coordinate plane touches more than one point at the same time, then it is not a function. If it only touches one point at the same time, then it will be a function, okay? So that's how we determine three way. Okay, so let's see the next definition, function rule. Okay, what is a function rule? A function rule is an equation that describes a function, okay? And the function notation is a function written with this symbol over here, to indicate the outputs. It is read f of x, or f is function of f. So it's basically saying that instead of y, we are going to write f of x. This is a linear equation, but this is a function. That's how you know that it will give you a function. This is a linear equation. It might give you a function. It might not. It will give you a relation, but it might not give you a function. This one, if you have F parentheses X on the inside, it will tell you, it den denotates that it is a function. Jose Fernando, I cannot see you. Okay, so that's how we determine if it is a function. That's another way. How many ways have we seen? We have seen four ways. Pure observation, the two columns matching, the vertical line test, and 
with the function notation. Do we have any question so far? No, okay. That next definition that is not over here is the input output table. Do you remember what is an input output table? It is a table of at least three columns in which we substitute a known or a specific domain in order to obtain the range for a function or a linear equation. No, or any equation, okay? Because we can use the input output table for any type of equations as well. Okay, so we are going to use the domain remember what's the domain that we're going to use negative two negative one zero one and two that's the domain that we are going to use in the input output table so I'm going to draw you an input output table. Like I said, three columns, okay? In the first column, we're going to have the dependent, the independent variable, which is the domain that we're gonna use, which is X. In our last column, we're gonna have the values of the range, the output. We, this is called the input because we're placing that inside the equation, which you're gonna have in the middle. Okay, you're gonna substitute every value of your domain in the equation and you're going to get out the output, which is the range, okay? So we're always gonna use negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, unless I give you a different domain. Are we clear with this? Yes? And remember, if it is f of x, if we work with this one, for example, you are going to write f of negative two will be equal to two x plus one. This is how we're going to substitute the value of negative two inside of the function two x plus one. So you're going to say that f of negative two will be equal to, and you substitute Instead of facts, you use the value that you have right in that parenthesis, which is negative two plus one. Negative two times two, that will be negative four plus one. And negative four plus one is how much? Negative, negative three. three. So this negative three, you're going to locate it over here. And that is your order pair, negative two comma three, comma negative three. And that is the order pair that you get using the input output table and working with this fraction, with this function equation, okay? Any other question? No question? We clear? Easy peasy breezy lemon squeezy, right? Okay then, what is today's topics? What is the name of today's topics? Relations and functions. Exactly, very good. Relations and functions. And what are we gonna do in our next class? We're going to have a classwork in which you're going to practice with the input output table, okay? And determine if the, if the linear equation is a function or not using different methods and graphing a function rule 
with the values of the domain and the range that you get from an input-output table. Is there any question, guys? No, right? Easy peasy, breezy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so I'm leaving you this for a little while so you can copy today's uh, what we saw today. Remember, you have to have this. And just remember, today we were supposed to use the grid paper notebook. So there it is, the grid paper notebook, which is what you should be working on. And that would, but would have been everything for today.